Okay, welcome folks. This is a video we're doing today on 11 plus preparation since it's the season. So it's maths quick questions, books 10 to 11, and we're looking at the CEM style questions for Durham University, test number 16. Now these are 22 questions that need to be done in 10 minutes. Let's to do this as quickly as possible. So question number one, we have what is 27 plus 186. We just do this in normal column method technique. And that will give you two, one, three. So I'm skipping some of the ease and rather than meticulously go through every single of the baby bits here. I'm just going to give you the answers for some questions. Question number two. What is 286763 rounded to the nearest hundred? Well, units, tens, hundreds, we've got to stop here and look at the next number to it. So because this number is five or more, you can add one to the seven. So seven becomes an eight. So it's two, eight, six, eight. Now we've got gaps here because it's the last digit. You've got to fill that with zeros. So it's two, eight, six, eight, hundred. That's the first two questions done for us nice and quickly. Right, let's make the page a little bit bigger. Okay, lovely. Now, Roman numerals, the L, that will tell us that it has a value of 50. The two X's, that's 10 each. So that gives you a value of 20. The V, that will give you a value of 5. The two ones, basically another two. So that will give us a total value of 77. So we're looking for the option which is 77, which is B. Done. A rectangle measures 15 by 20 centimeters. So here's our rectangle. So we put 15 on this side, that looks shorter. 20 on this side. So if you want to work out the area, the keyword here is area. Area equals length time by width for a rectangle. So the area equals... 20 times by 15. Now you don't need to know your 20 times table, the 15 times table. All we need to do is this. 15 times by 2 is 30. And there's a 0 here, which because the time is by 10. Let me put that back in. That's 300. Quick way of doing it. Okay, question number 5. Right, you're going to add up all these coins, and that should give you a total of £4.10. Okay, question, next question. The pictogram shows the colours of different cars in a car park. There are 45 silver cars. Silver cars are here. And this adds up to 45. They want to know what number should replace the key. Because they haven't given us a key here. Or they haven't given us the value for the key. So if this is 45, that means this first circle should be 20. Second circle should be 20. And the last little bit should be 5 to make 45. So that means the circle is worth 20 altogether. Because 20, 40, 45. Next question. How many more red cars than blue cars in the car park? For question number seven. Now, red cars than blue cars. We have over here, this is extra compared to this one. And this is extra. So this is the same as this. These are the extra bits. 20 add 15. So 20 and add the 15. That gives us 35 cars extra. That's done. Let's move on to the next question. What's the keyword here? The keyword in this question is mean. The heights of five cubes are this. What is the mean? Mean means add them up. So let's put the add signs there to save time. We divide it by five because there's five cubes. So if you add that all up for question number eight, it will give us a total of 30 centimeters on top. If we divide that by five, it gives us six, and that's the end of that question. I'm not spending more time than I need to on each question to show you that you can do it quickly. What is 90% of 540? Well, let's work out 10%. Well, 10% of 540 divided by 10. So that'll give you 54 pence, or 0 0.54 pounds. If you want to work out 90%, there's going to be 10 times by 9 is 90%. So this value, you have to times it by 9. So I'm just going to write it out again over here, because I need some more space. 0 0.54 times by 9. So 4 times by 9, that'll give you 36. 5 times by 9 is 45, add the 3 gives you 48. 0 times by 9 is 0, add the 4 is 4. And there's two places for the decimal point we'll put back in. So the answer is £4.86. This is a method for doing percentages. It's not the only method, there's lots of methods. And you just pick a method that you find is most easiest for you. Question number 10. Okay. Question number 10. Okay. Right, question number 10. What is the perimeter of the shape on the right now? The method I teach my students is called the coloring method. So the penciling, so we get, this is 4.5, this here, and this bit together also makes 4.5. So 
So in our head, 4.5 at 4.5 will give us an answer of 9. Oops, I've got the wrong color. I should really use red, really. Okay, red to match the color. Okay. Right, so we've got 9. Now let's choose a different color. Let's to count the, uh, let's, let's use the coloring technique. So, okay, now that's red, and I want a green. So this is three and a half. This, okay, why is it the color changing back? I shouldn't change back, I should hold it. Okay, this is not very good. The color keeps changing. It's supposed to be all green. I don't know why it's, okay, let's grab this. Okay, now, that hasn't worked out too well now. What I meant to show you was, that this green here, 3.5, was the same as these two greens, but the colors will come out different. So 3.5 add another 3.5 is gives us 6. Sorry, 7, sorry. We're we supposed to add them up. So 9 out of 7 gives you 16. Okay, sorry about the colors malfunctioning, folks. Pardon. Sorry about that. Let's move on to the next question. What is the time 135 minutes before 1320? So in 135 minutes, you have 120 minutes, which is 2 hours. And then you have another 15 minutes left over. So we have to minus 2 hours and 15 minutes. So 13.20 minus 2.15. So we'll have 5 minutes left over. And 13 take away 2 will be 11. So it'll be 11.05. Next question. Question number 12. What is the size of angle K? What we must understand is we have here angles around a point. Angles around a point add up to 360. Okay, so let's add up all these numbers. We're going to add up 120, 75, 50, and this little square means 90. We're going to add all them up. So question number 12, if you add them all up, okay, that will give us 335. So we start with 360 minus what we have. That will tell us what we don't have. So question number 12 should give us an answer of 25 degrees is this angle here, K. So, which is questions answer C. Lovely. Question number 13. The shape to the right is rotated 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So, we get this shape. It's facing like this way. We're going to turn it 90 degrees anti-clockwise, which means in the opposite direction of the clock. It means facing that way. So, if we turn it around, the answer will be for 13. It will be nice and easy. A. Next question. Question number 14. This question here, you have to be careful, students. Be careful of the different units. I'm trying to catch you out here. Centimeters, meters, and meters. And the answer is in centimeters cubed. So the so the king unit here is centimeters. We've got to make sure they make everything to centimeters because the answer will be in centimeters cubed. So in 0.4 meters, we have how many centimeters? We have 40 centimeters. 0.5 meters, we have 50 centimeters. How do we know that? Because we change meters to centimeters we times by 100. So volume of a cuboid is length times by width times by height, height. height, which is equal to 3 times by 40 times by 50. So 3 times by 4 is 12. 12 times by 5 is 60. And then you put the two zeros back in. Okay, so we have an answer of 6,000. Number 15, how many hours are there in a week? Well, we have seven days in a week. And in each day we have 24 hours, so we have to do 24 times by 7, and that will give us an answer of 168. Let's move on forward to question number 16. Question 16, what percentage of this pie chart is shaded grey? Well, first of all, we should have 360 degrees in a pie chart. We minus, oops, I meant to do minus there, 360 minus 324, so that will give us an answer of 36 degrees. Now, what percentage is grey? Well, we know 36 degrees is grey. So, 36 out of 360. You think this looks really hard. Okay, let's do some cancelling. So, divide, so divide that by 36. Divide that by 36. So, that gives us 1 tenth. If you want to change 1 tenth into percentage, you should already know. that 1 tenth is 10 percent. If you want to know the method, here's the method. Make them equivalent to over 100. Done. The nth term of a sequence equals 4n minus 6. We look at some algebra here. Question number 17. So n is the term number and the term number is 15. So we have 4 
times by the n, n is 15. 4 times by 15, take away 6. Well, 4 times by 15 will give us 60, and then we take away the 6, that will give you 54. Question done. Question number 18. Point E has been drawn in the grid to the right. It is reflected in the dashed line. Important that you do, do not do this. Reflections don't go down, they go across the mirror at 90 degrees to the mirror. So our reflection will be here. Okay, let's get out. So it's one that way, one this way. Okay, so the answer will be four, three. Question number 19, we nearly finished and we need, we're doing good for time. A little, little bit over the 10 minute thingy, but I am teaching and I'm doing the questions. 81 beads, 54 buttons. So 81 to the ratio of 54. So you got to think, what number can I divide it by? So 81 and 54, if I divide that by 9, I can divide that by 9. That will give me 9 and 6. Now, you look at the answer. Can I cancel again? Yes, I can. Let's write it over here because I'm running out of space there. Sorry about that, folks. I was writing a bit big. So divide that by 3, divide that by 3. So that will give you 3. That will give you 2. So you cancel and cancel until you can't cancel anymore. So the final ratio should be 3 to 2. We nearly finished the test paper. And we've taken approximately 11 and a half minutes. Question number 20. A line is drawn a grid. The coordinates of its ends are 4, 9, and 4, 3. So if I just quickly, just quickly sketch a grid. Okay, just gives an idea. Okay, right. So it says 4, 9. So let's put, let's put 4 over here. Let's put 9 over here. There's 4, and let's put 3 over here. So there's a corner of his ends, there's a line drawn on the grid. Here's the line. Watch this, give me a second. There you go. So we have a, a line, and they want to know what is the midpoint of that line, the middle. The middle will be here. So half between 9 and 3. Okay, hang on a second, let's undo that. That doesn't look very good. Give me a second. And we're going to point towards here. Okay. Okay, so that will give us half between 9 and th 3. And that will give us a value of 6. So our coordinates will be 4, 6. Okay, 4, 6. Right, question number 21. Okay, what is 3 or 4 divided by 16? Okay, let's get up our little word pad. So we have 3, 0, 4. We're going to divide it by 16. We're going to do this thing called a mini times table. Okay, so 16, okay, okay, 16, so we have a mini times table, so 2, 5, and 10. So 2 times by 16 will give you 32, 10 times by 16 is 160, and half of that will be 80. So let's have a go. So 16 goes in 3, nothing. Remainder 3. 16 goes into 30 while we, we just shy of 2. So it'll be 1. And we'll have left over how many? We'll have left over. We're too short. So we'll have left over 14. So how many 16s will go into 144? Okay. Okay, right. So what are we going to be getting here? Uh, yeah, good. Okay. So let's look at the mini times table. So we know that eight, uh, sorry, <clears throat> five lots is 80. If we know another two lots, okay, that will give us 32. We want to get to uh, 144. Can we get another two lots in there? That's five lots, seven lots, add them up. That's two, eight out of three is 11. Now, I don't think we're gonna fit another two in there. Okay, let's have a look. Okay. Something. Okay, let's put another 2 in there. Another 2. So another 2, 16 will give us 32. So that gives you 4, 4, 1. Beautiful. So that tells you how many. 5 add 2 add 2. That gives you 9. So the answer is C. There we go. Next question. If x equals 11, y equals 6, and what's the value of 3xy squared? So 3 times by the x value, times by the y value squared. So that's 3 times by 11. That'll give you 33, and 6 squared is 36. And if you take the time to work that out, 
in Law Multiplication Method that will give you 1188. Thank you very much folks for joining us on this video. Hopefully we'll put some more videos up to help all those students doing the 11 plus. If you like this video, uh, sub please subscribe and hit that little bell for notifications where you can get all the updates for your videos. Thank you Mr. Imran Iqbal, one to one tutor. See you in the next video. Have a good day and hope you pass your exam.